Moves Like Jagger. This song was dedicated to the legendary Mick Jagger, and today we are going to take a look at his journey. Mick Jagger, an individual whose name is inextricably linked with the defiant essence of rock and roll, has dominated the field for more than half a century. In addition to influencing the musical landscape of rock, his tenure as the charismatic leader of the Rolling Stones established him as an enduring symbol of the counterculture movement. Through his commanding stage presence and unique vocal abilities, he propelled the band to international superstardom from London's burgeoning music scene. However, beyond the public eye and the admiration of a vast audience, Jagger confronted the intricacies of his private life, which was marked by a series of ups and downs, most notably his prominent relationships and the challenge of maintaining a balanced public image. Please accompany us as we reconstruct the steps taken by Jagger on his incredible journey through the realm of rock and roll. Pete Mick Jagger, widely regarded as the quintessential frontman of rock, was born on July 26, 1943. He is a British superhuman performer, songwriter, actor and producer with an unprecedented impact on culture and music. Since his band The Rolling Stones dominated the music landscape in the 1960s, Mick Jagger has continued to captivate the globe. Legend has been made of his extraordinary stage presence and distinctive vocal abilities. In his capacity as the main vocalist of The Rolling Stones, Jagger composed a number of rock and roll's most enduring hits. Their music, which combines intense emotion with unfiltered vigor, has amassed an enormous fan base and won numerous accolades. Jagger has demonstrated a multifaceted aptitude through his forays into the film industry and his entrepreneurial drive, in addition to his musical prowess. In spite of attaining immense notoriety, Jagger's private life has also been subject to scrutiny, characterized by a succession of prominent partnerships and the complexities inherent in leading a life of prominence. Similar to his music, Mick Jagger's heart hopped from one romantic relationship to the next, illustrating a man who loved with the same fervor with which he lived. Everything began during the tumultuous freewheeling 1960s. With his well-groomed hair and a dazzling expression on his cheekbones, young Mick discovered himself embraced by Chrissy Shrimpton. She was not an ordinary girl. As the sister of the renowned model Jean Shrimpton, she was the visage that sparked a thousand mod fashion trends. They were London's darlings, walking hand in hand while enjoying the high life where the cameras never stopped rolling and the music never ceased. Nonetheless, their love dissipated like an overly brilliant shooting star. Mick encountered a singer by the name of Marianne Faithful shortly thereafter. Having a golden voice and irises to match, she was more than a mere inspiration for Mick. Rather, she reflected his own ardent creativity. They created memories and music together, but even the most tender melodies eventually came to an end. Their separation was the subject of much conversation. It represented a romance that had reached its pinnacle but ultimately needed to descend. Following her was Bianca Perez Mora Macias. Mick Jagger's matrimonial union with Bianca Perez Mora Macias served as a symbol of the rock and roll way of life that he personified. Their courtship became immediate fodder for the press, which was captivated by the union of the Rolling Stones' defiant lead vocalist and the Nicaraguan-born beauty after they first met in 1970. Their extravagant nuptials took place on May 12, 1971, in Saint-Tropez, against the backdrop of the sun-drenched French Riviera. A who's who of the era's cultural icons, including personalities and band members, were in attendance to witness the union of two of the most discussed figures of the era. Bianca became an immediate fashion icon while pregnant and radiant in a white Yves Saint Laurent suit. The couple's photograph outside the town hall became an enduring emblem of rock and roll extravagance in the 1970s. However, notwithstanding the pristine exterior, their matrimonial union was rife with difficulties. The relationship was strained by Jagger's incessant touring schedule with the Rolling Stones and the temptations that accompanied it. Bianca established her own reputation as an advocate for humanitarian causes after becoming a fixture of the international jet set scene, despite being frequently left to her own devices. The couple's outward appearances frequently obscured the underlying tensions. 
the subsequent years of interviews with Bianca would unveil a narrative of solitude and disregard, which stood in stark contrast to the opulent lifestyle that the general public assumed. The fact that Jagger was unfaithful was widely known, and the tabloids delighted in reporting on his exploits to add credence to the rumor that his marriage was in trouble. Their 1978 divorce, which was characterized by a contentious legal battle that was closely followed by the world, was as publicized as their wedding. The quote, my marriage ended on my wedding day, which Bianca infamously uttered, encapsulated the disillusionment of their relationship. The separation of the couple contributed to the legend encircling Mick Jagger, a man whose private life was equally turbulent and passionate as the music he produced. His romantic pursuits were not thwarted by the dissolution of his marriage to Bianca. Rather, it marked the beginning of a fresh phase in his illustrious personal history. Accounts concerning the causes of their divorce were abundant. There was speculation that the union was never founded on love, but rather on image and convenience, a calculated maneuver within the celebrity chessboard. As for whispers regarding secret deals and clandestine agreements, there was no concrete evidence to support these rumors. Following her divorce, Bianca persistently pursued her ambitions, assuming the role of an outspoken advocate for human rights and an environmentalist. Her contributions to the Bianca Jagger Human Rights Foundation established her as a highly regarded individual in the realm of global activism. Her influence extends beyond the matrimonial union with Jagger. Regarding Mick, his romantic life continued to be a topic of widespread public interest. Divorce and matrimony were subjects he infrequently deliberated upon, preferring to keep his private life shrouded in mystique, which has consistently defined his off-stage persona. As the 1980s approached, Jerry Hall gave Mick's heart a renewed pulse. She was a Texan model whose smile could illuminate the darkest alley in London and whose hair was as golden as the midday sun. Although it turned out otherwise, they exchanged vows beneath the barley sun in a ceremony that was both heartfelt and exotic. However, the law did not agree. The love life of Mick and Jerry was marked by ups and downs, and the couple had four children, Gabriel, Elizabeth, James, and Georgia May. They had been regarded as the epitome of a rock celebrity family, but as the saying goes, even images fade, and by the end of the new millennium, they had separated. Amidst everything, Mick was, in essence, a father multiple times over. Caris, his firstborn child with actress Marsha Hunt, was an enchanting melody that entered his existence. Lucas, his son with Luciana Gimenez, a Brazilian model, followed suit. His arrival marked the conclusion of his relationship with Jerry. Devereaux, the youngest Rolling Stone, was accompanied by ballerina Melanie Hamrick. Each of the love tales that have woven Mick's life together with its vibrant hues has been a tapestry of his life. He has always loved truthfully, albeit violently at times. His personal life has been equally as public as his concerts, and he has never concealed the happiness or sorrow that accompanied each. Mick's voyage was also fraught with obstacles. His wild parties were once the stuff of legends, the kind where drinks flowed freely, music blared ceaselessly, and the crowd was a blur of swaying bodies. However, in 1967, one such party at Keith Richards' residence became excessively boisterous, prompting law enforcement to arrive. Mick, who was facing a three-month sentence, was incarcerated. Although it was a bit of a fright, his successful appeal was due to astute legal counsel and a little bit of good fortune. Mick had additional legal issues as well. A second arrest occurred in the late 1960s, this time involving his fiancée Marianne Faithful, and a third occurred in 1972, subsequent to a dispute with a photographer. Mick, you see, was a member of that perilous rock and roll milieu where living on the edge was an everyday occurrence. Mick's difficulties were no longer limited to the authorities. Substance abuse and an antisocial disposition characterized his disposition. Neither was he modest about it. He experimented with substances ranging from LSD to narcotics. However, the plot takes an unexpected turn when Jerry Hall entered his life. She had no interest in it. She made everything clear, tidy up or she would be removed. That is precisely what worked. Seeing what he might lose, Mick possibly made the decision to quit the habit. 
Although it was difficult, the alternative was to bid farewell to Jerry. He led a hedonistic lifestyle that encompassed everything, not just narcotics. With an ever-expanding social calendar and a romantic life that surpassed the plot lines of mystery novels, the man attracted chaos like nothing. Throughout the course of his musical career, Mick Jagger experienced a profound spiritual transformation. Like his musical career, his spiritual voyage has been eclectic. During his youth, he belonged to the Church of England, which is a fairly typical occurrence for children in Britain. Nonetheless, due to the unexpected ways in which love compels one to act, he changed his faith to Catholicism after wedlock with Bianca. Mick later strolled in seclusion, discovering tranquilly and solace in the mantras and principles of Buddhism. Envision him, the legendary figure in rock and roll, seated alongside Buddhist monks as they meditated each morning, engrossed in the cadence of ancient words. However, Mick has never been one to perform a single song. Additionally, he perused Richard Dawkins' The God Delusion and found himself nodding in agreement. It appears that the immense marvels of the universe preoccupy him more than the concept of a singular divine being. He believes that dying and battling for religious principles is the worst kind of conflict. We will now examine the musical career of Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger's musical career commenced well in advance of his widespread recognition. During the 1950s, he was an ordinary child who cherished music. He met Keith Richards at Wentworth Primary School. However, their initial camaraderie waned due to their subsequent enrollment in separate educational institutions. Their combined enthusiasm for rock and roll was not reignited until a fortuitous reunion at a train station in 1961. They formed a connection over Chuck Berry and Muddy Waters albums. They were united by their passion for rhythm and blues, and this reunion would serve as the impetus for something considerably more substantial. Through Mick's magnetic vocal and Keith's unwavering commitment to the guitar, the duo embarked on a trajectory that would fundamentally alter the course of rock and roll. Prior to his notoriety, Mick was a student at the London School of Economics, an academic trajectory that was notably dissimilar to the cocky public image he would later embody. It is nearly ludicrous to consider Jagger, the rock legend, an economics student, but it was during this time that he assembled the remaining members of the Rolling Stones. The Rolling Stones were formed during these formative years on account of a shared flat and numerous late evenings. In addition to Mick and Keith, Brian Jones, Charlie Watts, Bill Wyman and Ian Stewart formed an ensemble that would subsequently become emblematic of the defiant essence of rock. The band established their initial official composition in 1962 and they rapidly gained recognition through performances at renowned venues such as the Marquee Club in London. Conversely, his existence revolved around the amalgamation of blues and rock, the tormenting of guitar strings against the backdrop of a culture-evolving society. It was through enthralling performances in dilapidated venues that one of the greatest rock and roll bands in the world came into existence. Alexis Corner and Cyril Davies may not be ubiquitous names today, but they were crucial in Mick's early years. The aforementioned blues band leaders granted the Rolling Stones several of their initial performances, and Mick refined his abilities under their guidance. It is arguable that the Mick Jagger that exists today might not have been possible without the impact of these British blues pioneers. The band adopted the stage moniker The Rolling Stones in reference to the Muddy Waters track Rolling Stone. As their reputation grew, they began to perform at venues such as the Crawdaddy Club. At this juncture, they captured the interest of manager Andrew Lug Oldham, who recognised their unbridled vitality and extraordinary potential. Oldham played a crucial role in the formation of their antagonistic persona, which stood in stark contrast to the refined persona of the Beatles. The Stones were consistently marketed as the rebellious alternative, and this image has endured. Additionally, Oldham inspired the group to begin composing their own music, which resulted in the legendary songwriting partnership between Jagger and Richards. Ultimately, their original compositions propelled the Rolling Stones from the status of a covers band to that of a dominant musical force. The band's inaugural single, Not Fade Away, 
a cover of a Buddy Holly track that exemplified their fusion of rock and blues, was released in 1964. Commercially successful and comprising of blues cover songs and one Jagger Richards original, their self-titled debut album cemented their position on the British music scene. Certain individuals posited that their abrupt ascent to prominence was illusory, hypothesizing that it had been orchestrated by music industry magnates with the intention of establishing a rival to the Beatles. Nevertheless, these conjectures were largely disregarded in light of the band's evident musical prowess and an ever-expanding following. The Rolling Stones gained prominence rapidly due to the intensity of their live performances. Being frequently characterized as mesmerizing and subtly menacing, Jagger's dynamic stage presence helped solidify his status as one of the most iconic frontmen in the history of rock. With the progression of the decade, the band's sound underwent a transformation. Their early blues approach started to amalgamate with the psychedelic influences that characterized the era. Released in 1966, albums such as Aftermath and Between the Buttons exemplified this transition by incorporating a wider variety of instruments and more intricate arrangements. The Stones' trajectory took a significant turn with the release of Aftermath. It was their first album wholly composed of original material, with a significant portion of it showcasing the developing songwriting abilities of Jagger and Richards. Social commentaries such as Under My Thumb and Mother's Little Helper encapsulated the shifting mores and tensions of the time. Paint It Black and Ruby Tuesday served as evidence of the productive collaboration between Jagger and Richards, which was thriving. At the conclusion of the 1960s, the Rolling Stones had solidified their status as the epitomes of rock rebellion. A consequence of the heightened intensity of their music, their lyrics frequently mirrored the social and cultural transformations of the era. However, their music was not the only thing that was stretching boundaries. Mixed stage presentations were unparalleled in nature. The legendary Jagger stride was characterized by pouty lips and gyrating hips. Attracting audiences into a tumultuous, nearly hypnotic state, he embodied the band's live performances. Intentionally and unintentionally, the Stones fostered controversy with this potent mixture of success. Their perilous reputation was not a facade, but rather an everyday way of life that frequently brought them into unfavorable news articles. Unusual fan hypotheses emerged regarding the band's music throughout this time period, the psychedelic sound and surreal imagery of Their Satanic Majesty's Request, 1967, contributed to the spread of rumors that the band was experimenting with the supernatural. With the release of Sympathy for the Devil, a song that some interpreted as a literal homage to Lucifer, this speculation achieved its zenith. Unable to completely debunk these rumors, the Stones possibly delighted in the aura of mystique they generated. Additionally, it was a period of self-development for Jagger. His association with the icon Marianne Faithful received considerable media attention. Faithful was frequently credited with influencing the band's manner and sound, especially with the co-wrote As Tears Go By, which she composed alongside Jagger and Richards, and is hauntingly beautiful. In lieu of the innocence that had characterized the early 1960s, a new era characterized by introspection and experimentation had emerged. As an indication of the changing times, albums such as Let It Bleed, 1969, and Beggar's Banquet, 1968, featured rugged and untamed tracks like Street Fighting Man and Gimme Shelter. The 1970s began with the release of Sticky Fingers in 1971, which featured contained tracks and the now iconic tongue and lip design for the first time. Jagger developed both as an artist and a celebrity during this time. Songs that reflected his personal life and extolled decadence contributed to his elevated status as the archetype of a rock superstar. The double album released by the band in 1972, titled Exile on Main Saint, achieved legendary status as a tattered masterpiece that incorporated elements from across the American music tradition. Despite their rising celebrity status, the Stones were mired in controversy. A prevalent issue during the early 1970s was the notorious drug arrests. 
The legal challenges that followed Richards' 1973 arrest in France for drug possession tarnished the band's reputation and contributed to the spread of the rumour that they were the focus of authorities intent on exposing their exploits. Despite this upheaval, the Stones maintained their success streak. The lament, Angie, which appeared on the 1973 album Goat's Head Soup, provided an insight into Jagger and the band's more introspective nature. Conversely, the album encountered ambivalent reception, potentially indicating a waning of the band's innovative prowess. By the mid-1970s, variations were observed in the rock landscape. Punk was gaining popularity due to its untamed energy, while disco dominated the dance floors. Some Girls, an album released in 1978, showcased the Stones' ability to adjust to these changes. It featured the disco track Miss You and a reference to punk with Shattered. This flexibility demonstrated that the Stones were not archetypes of the 1960s, but rather significant musical forces in the 21st century. With the end of the 1970s approaching, the Rolling Stones encountered internal strife. The increasing notoriety and extramarital pursuits of Mick Jagger started to cause a rift between him and Richards. The press exploited the tensions within the band, fueling widespread speculation regarding the likelihood of their separation. The Stones' end-of-decade albums, which included Some Girls and Emotional Rescue, were commercial and critical successes despite their personal and professional upheavals. These albums served as evidence of the band's exceptional capacity to maintain relevance and demonstrated that Jagger's creative well was far from exhausted. Jagger, consistently exemplifying the malleable characteristics of rock, encountered a critical juncture. It was during this period that he made the decision to pursue a solo career and issued the album She's the Boss in 1985. Uncertainty and anticipation greeted Jagger's debut solo album. Both critics and fans were anxious to see whether he could replicate the Stones' enchantment on his own. By including the number one single, Just Another Night, the album exemplified his prowess in composing memorable melodies. However, it also incited discord among the band members, specifically concerning Keith Richards. Some interpreted this venture into solitary artistry as a defiance move, indicative that the legendary Jagger Richards duo, commonly referred to as the Glimmer Twins, might be coming to an end. Despite his personal pursuits, Jagger maintained a close connection with the Stones. With the inclusion of the number one single, Start Me Up, Tattoo You, 1981, demonstrated the band's enduring popularity. Nevertheless, it was evident that a transformation was occurring in the band's dynamic. Formerly an apparent inseparable dyad of songwriters, Richards and Jagger were now managing a complicated partnership characterized by public disputes and subsequent reconciliations. The tabloids seized upon this tension, generating conjecture that the band was approaching dissolution. Notwithstanding these obstacles, Jagger's solo career was progressing rapidly. Although it failed to achieve commercial success, his subsequent solo album, Primitive Cool, was met with critical acclaim due to its refined musical style and introspective lyrics, which marked a significant deviation from the Stones' unfiltered philosophy. Certain enthusiasts postulated that Jagger's departure from the group was a strategic maneuver to establish an independent legacy, one that was unrelated to the Stones' contentious issues and the eccentric persona he had nurtured. In spite of band tensions and individual endeavours, the Rolling Stones persisted in their tour, captivating enormous audiences and affirming the integrity of their collective mystique. Constantly enthralling, Jagger's stage presence remained unchanged throughout the live performances. Despite the rumours of discord, the tours served as a reminder of the band's longevity and their uncanny ability to unite followers. With the advent of a new musical genre, Jagger and the Rolling Stones entered a new era of music in the 1990s. During that period, they would be required to reinvent themselves and reassert their significance in a constantly evolving musical environment. The Stones returned to the studio in 1991 to record Voodoo Lounge, a return to their bluesy roots that would ultimately garner them a Grammy following a three-year hiatus. The success of this album served as an indication of the Stones' enduring popularity and was interpreted by many as a revival, 
despite the fact that they had never truly disappeared. It demonstrated that despite shifts in musical trends, the stones were still capable of encapsulating the zeitgeist. During this time, Jagger, who was in his late 40s at the time, continued to perform with the juvenile confidence that had come to symbolize his persona. The Stones tours set new records for revenue, with the Voodoo Lounge tour reaching that status as the most profitable tour of any artist at the time. Jagger continued to captivate audiences the size of stadiums with renewed intensity. Ahead of the turn of the millennium, the Rolling Stones continued to perform at an unrelenting rate. Bridges to Babylon was their 1997 album, during which time they experimented with new styles and producers. Although the album was met with a varied reception, it exemplified the band's readiness to explore new territory and adjust to the prevailing musical environment. The Stones were gradually relinquishing the rumours that had previously adhered to them like a second skin in favour of a more direct account of their survival and longevity. Each subsequent studio album and tour contributed to the band's legendary status. The band commemorated its 40th anniversary in 2002 with the release of 40 Licks, a compilation of the group's greatest hits that also included brand new tracks. It demonstrated that Jagger and his colleagues were still capable of producing hits as Don't Stop and Keys to Your Love served as evidence of the band's enduring popularity. The accompanying tour, known as the Licks Tour, entailed performances in crowded stadiums across the globe. The personal accomplishments of Mick Jagger were also emphasised during this period. During 2003, Sir Michael Philip Jagger was knighted in recognition of his services to music. This distinction recognised his substantial contributions to the cultural tapestry of Britain and extended beyond. Nevertheless, this distinction was not devoid of critics. Keith Richards openly criticised Mick Jagger's decision to accept the knighthood, perceiving it as a transgression of their anti-establishment principles. This sparked renewed rumours regarding the status of their relationship. In his book, Life, Richards describes the distance between the two. I used to adore Mick, but it's been 20 years since I last visited his dressing room. At times I find myself thinking, I miss my friend, where has he gone? During the early 2000s, the Stones continued to confront the ramifications of their legacy. It was critical acclaim when they released A Bigger Bang in 2005, marking their first studio album in nearly eight years. Although Rough Justice and Streets of Love echoed the band's iconic sound, they demonstrated that they were still capable of producing innovative material. However, despite their ongoing remembrance of their history, the Rolling Stones were not impervious to the progression of time. Health concerns served as poignant reminders of their mortality, such as Keith Richards' head injury in 2006 and Jagger's larynx surgery in 2004. Rumours circulated regarding the band's future as both fans and critics speculated as to whether the Stones would be able to maintain their current, relentless tempo. The band's impact transcended the realm of music, as Jagger's astute business acumen became increasingly prominent. His involvement in numerous commercial ventures, including the collaboration with Tommy Hilfiger to launch the Stones fashion line, demonstrated his awareness of the group's brand influence. Jagger was incessantly in the public eye, his notable public appearances, such as his participation in the 2006 Super Bowl halftime show, sustained his prominence. Maintaining his relevance amidst new generations of admirers and artists, he persisted as a cultural touchstone. Additionally, Jagger's impact on popular culture was reaffirmed in the 2000s. The Rolling Stones' music achieved near-ubiquitous status, being sampled by artists of all genres and featured in advertisements and films. In addition to their longevity, they left behind a legacy of flexibility and an uncanny capacity to align with the prevailing mood. The decade of 2010 proved to be a complex and complex composition for Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones, as it skillfully intertwined triumph and personal tragedy. The decade witnessed the Stones celebrate their 50th anniversary, an accomplishment that has been surpassed by only a handful of bands, much less with the Stones' enduring vitality. With the 50 Amp Counting to Go tour in 2012, they commemorated their golden anniversary. 
During this tour, Jagger, Richards, Watts and Wood demonstrated that the passage of time had not significantly diminished their exuberance and charisma. The concert attendance of admirers, including individuals from all three generations, demonstrated the enduring allure of their music. A 2016 album titled Blue Num Lonesome marked the Stones' return to their blues origins and was among their new musical endeavours during this period. It garnered critical acclaim and was an homage to the music that initially motivated them to begin playing instruments. Additionally, it was awarded the Grammy for Best Traditional Blues Album. Nevertheless, the 2010s were not devoid of difficulties. Jagger was beset by profound sorrow in 2014 following the passing of his companion, the fashion designer Loren Scott. The demise she achieved through suicide profoundly affected Jagger's personal sphere, ultimately leading the band to reschedule their Australian and New Zealand tour. Jagger was profoundly impacted. Loren Scott dominated her era not only in terms of stature, surpassing six feet, but also in the fashion industry, as her creations adorned the torsos of A-list celebrities. She possessed an innate sense of sophistication that could elevate even the most basic garment. Mick Jagger, on the other hand, is the authoritative lead singer of the Rolling Stones, whose demeanor and movements epitomize the term rock star. Despite being engulfed in a whirlwind of fame and music, he discovered a sympathetic spirit and a refuge in Lorraine. They were intimately acquainted for a period of 13 years before she became his companion. An unanticipated duet was performed by Lorraine and Mick. He, the kinetic legend of the stage, and she, the undeterred powerhouse behind exquisite garments. Undoubtedly, she imbued his realm with an enduring elegance, while he inflicted upon her a ray of untamed vitality. Her absence stifled the once vibrant creativity of Mick in the fashion industry and in his life. Demonstrating their profound camaraderie, the band delayed their tour to allow Mick the necessary time to grieve. Jagger's performances were as enthralling as ever when they resumed. As the Stones resumed their tour, Jagger continued to deliver performances that somehow concealed his inner turmoil. Despite these individual turmoils, the Rolling Stones continued to exert a significant influence on culture. In 2016, they performed an unprecedented free concert in Havana, Cuba, an occurrence that would have been inconceivable when rock music was strictly prohibited in the country at the height of their fame. Similar to other renowned individuals, Jagger was not impervious to conspiracy theories. There were rumors that his seemingly limitless vitality and trim physique were not solely attributable to genetics or a healthy lifestyle, but rather to an unconventional cause. Although lacking evidence, these conjectures introduced a degree of fascination to the perpetually enigmatic vocalist. As the 21st century began, the Stones entered the future with an unblemished legacy, prepared to confront fresh obstacles and sustain their position as rock nobility. Nonetheless, Jagger's existence was not devoid of more somber instances. The untimely demise of Loren Scott in 2014 profoundly impacted his existence, serving as an agonizing reminder that beneath her formidable stage persona resided a mortal being, vulnerable to significant bereavement. The Rolling Stones embarked on their No Filter Tour, further evidence of their voracious appetite for live performances. However, they were not only appealing to their loyal fan base, a new generation was also becoming acquainted with the Stones, and Jagger's dynamic presence remained as captivating as it was during their initial emergence in the 1960s. Jagger frequently reflected on his career, the evolution of the music industry, and his own creative process during interviews. He consistently demonstrated foresight and cognizance of his status within the pantheon of rock titans, maintaining an eye on the future while manoeuvring through the intricacies of his legacy. But the voyage of the band was not devoid of obstacles. Jagger's heart surgery in 2019 served as a sobering reminder that even rock icons are fallible. As soon as the news of his successful recovery from surgery spread, it sparked speculation and concern. The repercussions for the band's future were contemplated by fans and the media, 
but Jagger was quickly restored and prepared to resume touring within weeks. Jagger's solitary endeavours and his membership in the band continued to intriguingly intersect. In 2019, he returned to the acting profession by starring in the suspense film The Burnt Orange Heresy. His performance served as a testament to his multi-talented nature and his capacity to enthrall spectators, transcending his role solely as a musician. Jagger's familial network is vast, as the lives of his offspring occasionally attain the same level of public scrutiny as his own. Jade Jagger's fashion endeavours and Elizabeth Jagger's modelling career attest to the fact that his family has acquired a small portion of his notoriety and inventive nature. Jagger has confronted the complexities of public relationships, press scrutiny, and the tribulations and triumphs of fatherhood over the course of his lifetime. The public's fascination with his personal life has persisted, mirroring the dynamic and multifaceted nature of his professional life and his relationships with his offspring and partners. However, despite the widespread interest in his private life, Mick Jagger has seldom permitted this scrutiny to diminish the quality of his music. Under Jagger's leadership, the Rolling Stones have maintained an unwavering commitment to their craft, as evidenced by the continued success of their tours and albums, which continue to attract large audiences and receive critical acclaim. Aside from the occasional unfounded rumour concerning the true nature of his relationships or the key to his perpetual vitality and youth, few speculations have been levelled regarding Jagger's private life. The enigmas that have persisted the longest regarding Jagger do not pertain to nefarious dealings, but rather concern his ability to maintain the rigours of his profession while leading such a public life. Having reached the age of 80, Jagger has not only withstood the test of time, but also transcended the very notion of age, remaining a mainstay in an industry that venerates youth. It would appear that the Rolling Stones have not been complacent, Conversely, they have persisted in their touring endeavours, resuming their No Filter tour in 2021, subsequent to a hiatus caused by Jagger's cardiac surgery and the worldwide pandemic. Their triumphant return to the stage demonstrated both their enduring relevance and Jagger's extraordinary recuperation and stamina. Jagger, in his later years, has also adopted the digital age by maintaining an active social media presence. By providing insights into his personal life and current events, his posts foster a stronger connection between him and his followers. A collaboration with Dave Grohl of the Foo Fighters, he released the satirical track Easy Sleazy in 2020. This composition transcended rock music generations and offered an insightful perspective on the COVID-19 pandemic. Mick Jagger's impact extends beyond his musical accomplishments and encompasses various other domains of entertainment. Mick Jagger's artistic prowess has transcended the realm of music and entered the illustrious film industry. His magnetic charisma prevented him from merely dabbling in acting. Rather, he plunged right into it. Consider that this individual is not one to work half-heartedly. His film debut. In 1970, he entered the film Performance, and portrayed a rock icon in that film. You did say that art mirrors reality, correct? He continued on from there. He replaced his microphone with a collection of firearms in the 1970 film Ned Kelly, in character as the legendary Australian outlaw. Although it was a bit of a departure from rock and roll, Mick never shied away from a challenge. In the 1990s, Mick appeared in the science fiction thriller Free Jack, 1992, which chronicled his quest for immortality. The proprietor of an escort agency in The Man from Elysian Fields, 2001, in which he portrayed him, then demonstrated that he was capable of quiet intensity. It was an aspect of Mick that was never revealed in the spotlights or in the stands, but Mick's ingenuity extended beyond the realm of cinema. His independent production company, Jagged Films, was responsible for the 2001 wartime thriller Enigma, which captivated audiences. Not to mention The Women, 2008, in which he served as the producer rather than the protagonist, but imbued the film with his signature. Mick imparted the same unfiltered vitality to films via these roles and undertakings as he did to his music. 
Although Mick Jagger is best known for his legendary moves and vocals, his filmography demonstrates that he is more than just a rock and roll icon. Mick Jagger not only established himself in the entertainment industry, but also entered the business world with the astuteness of an accomplished entrepreneur. He realized that the sparkle of show business is not solely comprised of applause, but also of agreements negotiated in the background. He then donned a business suit and commenced his duties. Jagger ventured into the realm of fashion, capitalizing on his association with fashion icons and his rock star persona. Akin to his melodies, but with a contemporary spin, he invested in real estate and played his cards right in the property market. Envision Mick augmenting his empire beyond the stage by making decisions not only in the studio, but also in the boardroom. However, Mick's commercial interests extended beyond tangible goods. He also possesses a keen understanding of the digital realm. His involvement in technological ventures is as innovative as his music was in its infancy. Recognizing the equal importance of the physical and digital stages, he has adopted the internet age. Mick Jagger's entrepreneurial pursuits span real estate, technology, fashion, and real estate, all of which reflect the same audacity and ingenuity that characterized his music career. Activism and philanthropy are also impacted by Jagger's fame. His advocacy for music and the arts, in addition to his support for environmental causes, has firmly established him as a conscientious participant in the global dialogue. His stance on climate change has been resolute, and he has utilized his platform to bring attention to this crucial matter. Jagger has advocated for activism among his extensive fan base to combat climate change and supported international movements in this regard. During periods of catastrophe, Jagger has been quick to offer assistance. He and the Stones have participated in relief concerts, including the 12 to 12 to 12 concert for Hurricane Sandy relief and the concert for New York City following the September 11 assaults. These occasions not only generated considerable financial resources for the affected individuals, but also functioned as a symbol of optimism and unity amidst challenging circumstances. Additionally, education has been affected by Jagger's philanthropic influence. Recognizing the potential of music to bring joy to lives and cultivate talent, he has advocated for music education for disadvantaged children. His contributions have facilitated the provision of instruments and instruction to individuals who might not have been able to pursue music otherwise. Although certain enthusiasts speculatively regard his physical prowess as stemming from an extraordinary genetic heritage or secret elixirs, it appears that his remarkable strength is the result of a conscientious way of life, unwavering dedication to his work, and an exceptional spirit. Mick Jagger's life narrative is a fusion of turbulent music, family sagas, and ventures into the film and business industries. It could fill an anthology of rock and roll anecdotes. His spiritual voyage has spanned the temples of Laos, the Church of England, Catholicism, and the pages of atheism, all while maintaining the same eclectic nature as his musical genres. His personal life is a complex web of connections, encompassing love tales that have resulted in the birth of eight children who have since occupied diverse public spheres, thus perpetuating the Jagger heritage. In addition to performing on music stages, Jagger also appeared on the silver screen. Later, he utilized his business acumen in production to set plots in motion with films such as Enigma and Performance and Ned Kelly, which demonstrated his acting prowess. His diverse business interests, which included real estate and fashion, demonstrated a strategic and imaginative intellect. A perpetual accompaniment, his music has undergone transformations over the years, mirrored the zeitgeist, and exerted an impact on successive generations. Anthems have been composed in his honor, and his live appearances are deeply ingrained in the collective consciousness of rock and roll aficionados across the globe. Mick Jagger's meteoric rise from a youth playing the harmonica to the status of a knighted rock icon serves as a compelling illustration of a life lived audibly, a symphony of triumph, redemption, and enduring allure. Please share your opinions regarding his life and career in the section below labeled comments.